talk x ordinary to extraordinary where we bring you unconventional radical personas welcome to the show my name is rohit basi your host today our very first show we have an individual who has connections with nasa fbi and ai he is, he works with governments startups and corporates to show them how to crack the code to growth welcome to the show nader sabri welcome nader sabri to the show thank, thank you. you for being here thank you very much thank you for hosting so nader me. we're going to go deep dive straight into it you do something called growth hacking correct what is growth hacking <laughs> what is growth hacking Uh, growth hacking uh, originates from some which we call the growth sciences and that most people don't realize when I first tell them that growth is a science and it kind of shocks people in the very beginning uh, but to directly speak about growth hacking in itself which is a part of the growth sciences is essentially achieving disproportionate results meaning less resources more outcome that's the art behind growth hacking okay before we go more into this growth hacking thing just a little bit background about yourself who are you where have you come from and how did you get into this because yeah. you you're a person like I, like i've said is who's got a connection with the with nasa with the fbi and there's this connection with ai as well so i'm like whoa what's going over here and how does this all relate to growth hacking so i just want to get a bit of background for our listeners for our audience is sure. who are you so essentially i'm i'm a strategist innovator and entrepreneur in the last 27 years I've been building um organizations that are able to achieve exponential growth. Uh I've been very fortunate to work with some of the fastest growing and most innovative companies on the planet, um breaking the boundaries of science and technology. Um throughout my career I've managed to raise about 120 million dollars, 20 million in companies that I've built, 100 million in organizations I've helped co-found. Um I've helped invent several things and have invented several of my own uh space technologies and that's kind of the relationship uh, as you're trying to connect it between all the unique elements um and how all those things come together is actually accidental uh, the story is just unusual like how they all kind of come together but they are accidental they're not things that were planned um they all just kind of come together and how I landed in growth hacking was essentially um in the last company that I was building which was my NASA company um I had people that I would hire who'd be like dude you're like you're like a growth hacker man and it was just like it was it was the early stages of the definition of growth hacking actually and it had caught my attention and and as I sold that company in uh, end of 2017 uh I started to realize a bit deeper what this sciences of growth were and I spent 2 years studying it analyzing it creating methodologies around it and reflecting what I've done over the last kind of 25 26 years uh building companies from scratch um helping governments uh, accelerate their growth um looking at technology companies how they've completely disrupted the way that we do everything and how they accelerate life and and enhance our lives in many different ways and so that's kind of the the commonality or the connection between all of them this thing growth hacking which clearly you're very passionate about it's been around for a while and one of the things which i've noted through the years and i would say i was a part of that thought process that this is all fake it's a hoax what are your thoughts on that no that's that that's a very common myth um a lot of it has to do with the how elusive growth hacking is um growth hacking starts from a very dark place it has a very dark history to it and the the reason behind it and you've probably heard some of these terms which is like white hat black hat or gray hat uh activities and they essentially mean white hat is doing things that are illegal ethical and open to the public uh things are gray or in the middle and things that are black hat or activities that are illegal immoral or unethical and unfortunately growth hacking started in 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 the black hat areas um as it shifted more towards the public and became part of the growth sciences it started to become more white hat activities however though the real essence of growth hacking are secrets top secret activities that take place and so the biggest growth hacks that happen 
are in what we in the in the grayscale, especially on the darker side of grayscale. So they're not necessarily breaking the law or doing unethical activities, but they are definitely in the deepest, darkest, darkest, darkest spaces where people cannot see them. Uh, so essentially, when I do my training, I tell people like, if I can go Google a growth hack and I find it there, it's been already exposed. Or a simpler way of looking at it is growth hacking is like milk; it has an expiry date on it. So every growth hack we develop, um, you know, the longer it stays in the dark, um, the longer it's going to last. So it's in our benefit to ensure that the lifespan of the growth hack stays as long as it can. Hence the observation you make, is it fake or is it elusive? And, and from the outset, yeah, it seems like it, but it's real, it's, it's, it's real as day. It, it's happening every day. Growth hacking is being used on you without you knowing it. Interesting. What you're saying to me is that it's being used on me, the public, everyone, all around us. So what I want to know is, give me a couple of examples, just that one example that we see it happening on a day-to-day -day basis in our lives. So a lot of it has to do with behavioral manipulation, okay? Wow. And the biggest secret behind it is, okay, so, so I walk into a client and they're like, we want to change the behavior of the consumer. And I tell them, well, good luck with that. That's not going to happen. And they kind of look at me like, but dude, we just, we were talking about growth hacking. Where's the behavioral change here? And I said, well, it's not about us changing the behavior of the consumer. It's about us tapping into his existing patterns and manipulating them towards a direction without them feeling or seeing it towards a favorable outcome for us. It happens every single day. Walk into a McDonald's, you, you want to get a Big Mac, and all of a sudden, through their decoy strategies, their growth hacks push you all the way up to getting a meal and getting dessert, and you walked in wanting to spend, say, a, a few dollars, end up spending way more than that. This is behavioral manipulation, very simple examples. So they're not there to change you, they're just there to manipulate your, your behaviors. So McDonald's being that classic example of the yep. upsize when people do... 100%, yeah. These are like decoy strategies. So, so I think we were talking about this earlier. In the 90s, I did some work with Starbucks. Yep. And uh, uh, Starbucks mastered this. Um, in, in, in it's kind of the mid-late 90s. Nobody knew who really Starbucks was. Hmm. Uh, and coffee was essentially like a styrofoam drink for a dollar, if you remember this, right? <laughs> and so upping the game was like a completely different thing, right? They were competing with these people who were just, they were selling donuts or something else. And then coffee was an addition. It wasn't the center product, right? And so to bring that to life, there was just a lot of groundwork in the sense of behavior and manipulation that took place, which still exists in the DNA of Starbucks today. Mm -hmm. um, if if you, we were so talking about some of those kind of secretive <laughs> things that they've done, but um, you can see it. Now it's clear as day for you. You walk into a Starbucks and you can just see exactly what it is. Yeah. Now, from what you're telling me, there's a lot of experience you have in this field of growth hacking. Is there some kind of education you need to get into this field? Yeah, well, it, it's a very good question. Um, in the last few years, I've been doing a lot of work in the area of education, both literally and metaphorically. What mm. I mean by that is a lot of academic institutions are, are my clients, uh, but more importantly, when we talk about the growth sciences. now. One of the challenges in the academia space is that um, they've been designed from the very beginning to build the basic building blocks. And uh, when I'm talking, let me be a bit more specific, sorry, I'm talking about the startup ecosystem in this particular case. Okay. So they've been very good at building the basic building blocks and they do that very well. The challenge with that though, is once you've got the basic building blocks, you need to do something with it, you need to grow. Mm -hmm. And the sciences and the education behind that is largely absent. Um, to a point when I wrote my first book that became a bestseller, it was a blueprint designed to help people to accelerate their growth. Mm. And the, the biggest surprise for people in that was that uh, I would talk about, you know, silver bullets and, mm. and formulas, a success formulas. And I tell them all that stuff is rubbish, throw it out the door. And that would surprise people. I tell them, well, essentially in the, sci the, the growth sciences, um, there is no such thing as a, as a single formula. Right, so your formula as Ruhat's success or mine or your organization are completely different. Even mm. if you and I were cloned exactly the same and then we were both given the exact same challenge, um, the formula that I would use and you would, uh, you would use eventually would be very different in the way that they would actually work. Mm. So the only way to tackle that from an educational perspective is a blueprint. And what a blueprint successfully does is a process that helps you find your formula. So okay. my objective behind all the education I do in the area of growth sciences is how to help you find your success formula. 
Uh, I learned this the hard way, which is a whole different story. Um, after the second book, I had created a, a methodology. So I had roughly, uh, and the number's way larger than that, but I had roughly about 5,000 people globally using my methodology um, purely because people would develop growth hacks and they wouldn't know how to communicate it. There was no way to um, structure it properly. And it was, it was just a mess. It was a beautiful mess, by the way. All, all innovations start as a beautiful mess. Mm. Um, so I reorganized the whole growth hacking space by creating a methodology that would enable you and I to communicate and, and effectively develop the future of growth hacking. And so it exploded. Um, academic institutions started picking it up on their own. I would get contacted by people from Harvard, Stanford, even here in, in the UAE, I have uh, actually a former dean of media and innovation. She actually mm. quit her job and joined my team. There are several institutes like Harvard and, and Stanford um, who essentially, I mean, they're, they're, they're students or professors who go look for different methodologies on how to do certain things. And so they, they discover it, they, they put it into application, they give it a try, and then they reach out to me with their findings because they get really excited on how it works. Um, so as a, as a result of it, you know, I've, I've had a, a dean of media and innovation here in the country here who actually quit her job uh, to come with me full time. She's now my chief ignition officer, um, and which is really cool. Uh, she, it's her approach when she came to me and she applied it to her students over and over again. And uh, she's like, you know, this is, this is the next design thinking. I mean, this, this is gonna disrupt education. Mm -hmm. Although my intention is not education, my intention is helping the fastest growing companies in the world to continue to grow or the companies which, are, which I call outliers, right? So outliers mm -hmm. is a whole different story, but I, I look and educate people to identify the outliers in the world who have an ability to grow and I give them the tools to do that and we accelerate their ability to, to essentially grow, yeah, at okay. high speed. So we're, we're talking about education, and I, look, we've got your two books over here, Growth yep. Thinking and Ready, Ready, Set, Growth Hack. So these are the two books. Yep. Uh, I, be, I believe one of them is a bestseller, or is it both of them are bestsellers? Well, the yellow one, yeah, the Ready, Set, Growth Hack is yep. an international bestseller. I think the blue one is not far away from becoming a bestseller, hopefully very soon, yep. yeah. And this is the methodology that's used by, well, last time we counted was over 5,000 people, and that was a while ago, so probably maybe even double that are using it today. I mean, this is a form of education. Clearly, this Correct. is a form of education. Correct. Um, Exceed College focuses on online education. Everything yep. is done online. Yep. As a growth hacker, do you believe that growth hacking can be applied in the online environment in terms of education? Is that oh, feasible? Absolutely. I mean, I run something, as you know, the, the, it's called the Ninja Growth Ninja School. And the Growth Ninja School is a 100% digital education experience. It's very refined to the growth hacking space. And I mean, there's massive advantages. I mean, I can just keep listing advantages yeah. over disadvantages. The only disadvantage would be that I couldn't connect physically with somebody, yeah. which ends up happening at the end anyway. So it's a byproduct. Mm. Um, but the biggest advantage is I'm able to put highly sophisticated, um, updated concepts, um, get them into application and get them to an audience as fast as possible. And I've been running virtual teams for over a decade and to me it didn't make sense why virtual was not that popular. Mm. Now it became a necessity. People are going back to physical as you can see, which was awesome, but they are neglecting the benefits and power that we've had of virtual that we could continue to use. So yeah, it's, it's been good in that sense. It, it's interesting you said that because there are people who believe online does not work, but clearly it is working. Yes. The message you're spreading through online is amazing. Yes. The, the, the reach of digital is outstanding. That's, yep. that's what yep. it is. Yep. And so, which comes to my next uh, uh, question is, often when I've heard you through, during talks, you talk about um, four technologies or enablers around yep. growth hacking, yep. and one of them being AI. Yeah. Why so much focus on this AI? Yeah, so fundamentally there's, there's five exponential technologies that change everything that yeah. we do and one, one of them is artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, um, it, so each one of these five technologies solve a single problem. And so most people get confused because they're like, there's all these bleeding terms and as you can imagine, AI can mean a billion different things to a billion different people. Uh, same with all the remaining four of the hmm. other technologies on top of AI. But fundamentally, when you understand that each one of them solves one single type of problem, all that confusion goes away, okay? okay. So AI is designed for uh, autonomy and decision making. That's it, that's the problem it solves, mm. okay? Whereas blockchain solves distrust, right? So if you just imagine a system and you wanna remove distrust, blockchain is what you use. Mm. So in artificial intelligence, it's about decision making and auto, um, uh, autonomy, okay? 
Um, and it's about streamlining the ability to make decisions a, a lot faster, a lot more accurate and take in information that can change people's lives, mm -hmm. really. Uh, that's, that's the essence of artificial intelligence. So, so in essence, if, I, if I'm listening, hearing you correct or, or listening to you, um, you would recommend people to venture out to learn more about AI yep. if they really want to expand this growth hacking in within the organization? No, no, definitely. I mean, so we look at it in kind of two ways. I have several clients who are artificial intelligence companies and we use growth hacking the other way and the other way is using artificial intelligence internally into an organization for growth hacking purposes. So it's important to kind of divide the topic in those two mm. areas. Um, ultimately, it fundamentally plays a really important role. So as we were talking about behavioral changes, artificial, artificial intelligence is really good at figuring that out. It helps us find the patterns. It helps us find the things that we didn't understand. It helps us create links that we didn't know existed. It helps us test out links that we, we want to th see where they may go. Um, those are some of the advantages of artificial intelligence in the growth hacking space, especially when it comes to the behavioral side of stuff. The, yeah. As I'm listening more and more of you, a question comes into my mind is, on a scale of one to Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee being like <laughs> ultimate, what are you in terms of growth hacking? Are you one really low? Are you Bruce Lee level? Probably way beyond Bruce Lee. I mean, no offense to Bruce Lee. I love Bruce Lee, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's it's a it's a very interesting space. We're we're just so deep into this space. Um, mm. We're learning new things almost every minute. Question comes to my mind is, so people who have who are starting who's doing a, who are doing an MBA, or any kind of education to progress in their career, how would you entice them? into getting into this thing called growth hacking. What can you say yeah. to them? What can you do? Or what could exceed college tell them, you know, this is something which is very powerful. Yep. How, how is that feasible? How can they do that? Well, Rohit, it, it, growth hacking is a different, very different mindset. Um, it's not for everybody, uh, but it's something that I believe everyone should learn, mm. at least understand what it is uh, to see where it's coming from. Um, I write a lot about the growth hacking mindset and some of the 14 behaviors that exist um, that, that ferment the ability for someone to be able to grow. And so I find a lot of people in the business education world have some of these traits, but they haven't been developed. Um, they haven't been developed because of conditioning. So we've all been conditioned. Conditioning is probably the number one barrier um, to almost developing any mindset, right? Um, you've been conditioned from through education, of course, through culture at home and, and all kinds of things. And one of the biggest barriers, I would say, is the, the negative connotation around experimentation, that it's high risk, it's high cost, go down the proven path. I mean, no offense, but that's all rubbish, actually. Um, if, you were, if you were a growth hacker, you would never buy into that. Mm. Um, there's no such thing as proven because every day something else is broken. Mm. Um, you don't know the answer to everything, neither does anyone else, and the only way to know that is through experimentation. Mm. Uh, experimentation is not high risk. In fact, it's, it, it's a higher risk not to experiment. Uh, it's higher risk not to put in the money and time to, to experiment. I mean, we, we have ways of getting past some of these things. I work with some Fortune 500 companies, and I'll, I'll give you just a very interesting insight into this culture. Um, they don't want us to call anything an experiment. They want us to call them projects. So through these 14 behaviors, I mean, there's so many, we can probably spend a whole talk on them, but one of the most interesting ones is curiosity. Mm. And uh, a growth hacker by nature is extremely curious. Um, they'll question things like, well, why does this exist? Why is this this color versus another color? In fact, why hasn't anyone ever changed it? And if it hasn't changed, what would create something, what would create the instance for something like that to change? Mm. And if it did change, what would be in it for me? Mm. Is there utility, right? Is there utility behind it? That's another part of the behaviors mm. is, a utility, you know, an ability to think about utility. So we can talk about all kinds of fancy, beautiful things that are poetic, but if it doesn't lead to some kind of an outcome that is tangible, right, and practical, then it's a pointless conversation to have. Mm. Okay? I know many people would disagree with me on that, but in the world of growth hacking, we're extremely pragmatic, right? If it's not supposed to be there, it's got to go. If it's meant to be there, bring it in. If it's working, do more of it. If it stopped working, get rid of it. Right? It's very simple decision making. Now you have this thing called the 10 day challenge. Yes. And from the profiles which I've seen, these people are business owners or startups. 
in some cases, some of them are highly educated, have got the MBAs yep. or are in the MBAs or doing some kind of professional qualification. Yep. What is this 10 day challenge all about? And how does it help these professionals? Yep. How does it help these, all these people? Well, the, it's called the 10 day growth hacking challenge. Essentially the 10 day growth hacking challenge is the gamification of the blue book there, which is the methodology mm. used for growth hacking. And um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's the first thing is it is a lot of fun. Um, in 10 days, we develop three growth hacks using the methodology and its objective is to 10x your growth. Hmm. Um, for a few of them, it happens in the 10 days. For most of them, it happens after. They build foundational growth hacks in those 10 days and it gives them exponential growth afterwards. And I'm going to address a very sensitive point when I use the word 10x. I'm sure you, you, you know exactly yeah. this thing. So, <laughs> so I always like to tell the audience that 10x is a, is a metaphorical reference to exponential growth. And it's been branded uh, by many people. But what most people don't know is that this originates from an interview with Steve Jobs in the 80s, actually. It is not where you've seen it popularized, where he was asked about his process of innovation. And he says, well, we don't do things incrementally. We don't look at things at a 0.5 or a 0.10%, whatever it is. We look at things in multiples. And so when we're looking at something, we're looking at how to 10x. And so it became central to their innovation process. This is actually where it started to get coined and it's been polluted, but we'll leave that aside. <laughs> so in those 10 days, um, we do some incredible things. Um, we've had contenders, um, for example, one of my top contenders, uh, her app only had 100 downloads when she first started out. Roughly uh, b between 45 to 60 days after done when implementing growth hacks, uh, she has over 40,000 downloads. Um, successfully raised a million dollars uh, during this process and has another three to four million in the pipeline uh, as of today. Um, we have several people who end up raising a lot of money um, and, and, and this is not just a fundraising, like, this is not a fundraising tool, <laughs> uh, just to be very clear, the object, because I, I, I don't believe in pursuing money, I believe in pursuing growth. And it's an interesting combination because a lot of the funds are part of the growth hacking challenge because of that. Um, you know, if, if you're a company that grows and you pursue growth, money will follow you because the equation investors look for, no matter how sophisticated it sounds, is essentially, how do I take what Rohit's done and multiply that multiple, multiple times more, keep it as consistent as possible and get an outcome that is way more than what I put in. Mm. That is the most simplistic mindset and that's exactly what an investor is looking for, no matter what they tell you. And growth is what they're looking for. So going back to the question you asked earlier about academia, academia plays an important role in this, but because they build the basic building blocks, they don't create growth ready organizations which what are the funds are looking for. Hmm. And so many of the startup accelerators uh, around the world, some of the top ones work with me because they have the same problems and, and, and problem in a good way. So they, they're really good at building blocks, like awesome. But then what, right? And so that gap, the gap between the two is where the challenge comes in. We fill in the gap between companies have got excellent building blocks, but are not growth ready, making them growth ready using exponential growth technology and, and, and techniques and the methodology, get them to become growth ready companies. Um, many of them move on to never raise any funding because they don't need it. Um, they grow, we've had an example, one, one of our contenders is building a media empire. He's just started as a podcast and he's today, he's being hired by other people who are trying to build other media products and that's become his growth hack, right? Um, we've got people in the financial services industry, fintech, healthcare. Um, it's incredible and we touch all, we touch all industries. Uh, we touch many different sizes of organizations. We've, got, we've just onboarded our first contender last week in Africa. Uh, so we touch many parts of the world um, in different ways. It's really awesome. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Let's come to a close to this talk. We could, we could talk all day long, all year long. Uh, but I'm sure our audience need to do other things as well. For those people who are listening, who may be aware or unaware of growth hacking, what are possibly three things they can do to practically grasp growth hacking or let's say implement it with the work which they do? Yeah. 
Well, at the end of many of the talks that I do, I actually answer this in a different way. I say, I challenge everybody in the audience to leave here today and start experimenting. Don't think about anything else. I just want you to think of a growth problem you have. I want you to do any experiment because I want you to build a muscle in experimentation. Um, go and just try any experiment, see what happens. And, and ultimately, I mean, going back to the challenge when it comes to experiment, we had an amazing fail take place with our new contender in Africa. And I'm really proud of her because yeah. we made this fail happen in an hour. Okay, so if it was going down a normal route where experimentation was placed, it could have taken her months to figure out this wasn't gonna work. So in one hour, we found a way using our methodology to find out it was a dead end. And she was like so excited and happy, which is exactly what we're looking for. Because mm. now when we know where not to go, what's left is knowing where to go. Mm. And, and that gives a, a new form of energy. By the time we were done, many transformations happened on this challenge. But one of the most amazing ones that happened to her at the end of this fail, her mind opened up to so many growth possibilities that she's like, I am so confident about the future of my organization and what I can do because I went from not seeing many growth opportunities to seeing so many, I don't know what to do with them. And I said, perfect. That's exactly the position we want to be in because now we're going to continue experimentation. So we, we work with many transformations and, and at the core of it, I suggest people to experiment. Don't worry about structure. I don't, don't, don't worry about any of that stuff. You can learn that through the methodology. Just go start experimenting, see what will happen. So, so in simple words, if there's three things you can go out there, practically implement it, experiment, experiment, experiment. experiment. That's Got it. all you need That's to do. That's it, yes. Thank you so much, Nadir, for your time. Truly Thank appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. being here at Talk. Thank you. Thank you.